This is the story of two radio jingles, two rock and roll icons, and a letter that I still treasure to this day. While attending Texas Tech and majoring in broadcasting, I ended up working at an iconic radio station, KLLL. KLLL was a country AM and FM that had been around for years. It was owned by the Corbin family, and that will become instrumental, no pun intended, in the telling of the story of what happened on my very first overnight shift. It was late summer, and the South Plains Fair was going on. The station was broadcasting from the fair, and I, with a portable tape recorder, was walking through the booths and interviewing sponsors and other interesting people. Towards the late afternoon, the scheduled overnight jock called off, and the program director asked if I would fill in. Again, this is a time when AM radio was king. FM was the redheaded stepchild. I was working for the FM, so the AM jock had to show me and familiarize me with the workings of the AM control room. While he was doing this, he told me a story of an overnight shift that he had done, and while the building was empty, he started rummaging around through the offices. What he found was amazing. In the general manager's desk, he found an old acetate disc. Now, acetate discs were blank discs that could be made into demo records fairly quickly and easily. This disc contained two tracks. Both of them were jingles for KLLL sung by none other than Buddy Holly. Buddy was a family friend of the Corbins, and he had helped his friend Waylon Jennings get a DJ job at KLLL before Waylon joined the band. One of the top recording artists in 1958, Buddy also became extremely influential for dozens of rock and country singers in the years to come, from the Beatles and the Rolling Stones to Elton John and Bruce Springsteen. So the Night Jock had made a dub of that acetate disc, and he played that tape for me. One jingle was to the tune of Every Day. The other was to the tune of Peggy Sue, both huge hits for Buddy during that time. I was floored, and I asked him to make me a copy. Now, as you listen to the jingles, and I'll play them in just a second, you got to remember that this is from a, an acetate disc that was already very scratchy because it had been played a lot. Buddy recorded these in his New York apartment on his personal tape recorder just six months before that fatal plane crash that would take the life of Buddy, the Big Bopper, also a DJ in Texas at the time, and Richie Valens. Every day it's getting better Getting more cards and getting more letters Everybody loves to tune our way Hey, hey, hey Everybody loves to tune our way What I do, you tune our way the whole day through to music. K Triple L. Well, it's country style on K L Double L. In 1973, Paul McCartney bought the publishing rights to all of Buddy's songs. I had often wondered if Paul knew about the existence of these jingles. So in 2001, I told my friend Maurice Williams about them. Maurice told me if I got him a dub of the tape, he would make sure that Paul McCartney got a hold of it. And a few weeks later, this letter came in the mail to me. These are stories I've been wanting to tell for a long time, so I hope you're enjoying them. More radio stories to come. Be sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell for now. That's a wrap.